All right. Uh, we got another question here. And this time we're trying to derive the equations that we're using. So it'll be a fun discussion. Let's first uh, start with reading. Uh, the statement is derive equation 10.23. And they give us a hint. Start by dotting V uh, into equation 10.17. Okay, so what are all these things? Well, we want to derive the rate of change of the particle's energy. So d by dt of t, the kinetic energy, plus qv, the potential. Okay, we remember that from our Physics 2 courses. Um, but this says that that's equal to the rate of change partial d over partial t, d dt of qv minus uh, v dot a. Now, our hint requires us to... Uh, use 10.17, which is F equal Q. And then for E, we just put in the uh, potential formulation and V cross B, we put in the curl of A. All right, so, well, let's just uh, dive on in. Should be quick and easy. So start by taking a total derivative of the total energy. So here we have D by DT of the potential and, or the kinetic and the potential. So dt d, d big T over dt plus dqv over dt. Okay, well, what we know about kinetic is that it's one at mv squared. And what we know about the uh, potential is that we can move the charge q through. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, what we see here is that we have uh, one half m uh, 2v since we have to use a chain rule or a power rule on it, excuse me, cancel that out. And then we have here um, Q, uh, yeah, for the product rule. Why is this getting messy? Okay. So, yeah, keep taking that derivative. So we have dv dt, since we don't know what that actually, since what V actually is, we have to apply a chain rule there. Similarly, the dv dt, we have to uh, apply the convective derivative, which again is shown in the book as to why, because we have the partial, but we also have the field changing with respect to its velocity that we need to incorporate there into the total derivative sake. So in the red, what you see is that the from the total time derivative of uh, kinetic energy, we have mv, m times dv dt, um, which is actually equal to F. If that's the case, we have uh, V dot F plus Q over partial V, partial DT over uh, or plus the V dot del operator multiplied into V. Okay. So nothing too bad there. Just some calculus moves, but be careful how you synthesize and organize or try to color coordinate to make it eat, uh, to make it match. Now, from the hint, they said we need to evaluate the red term with the force law. So we use the hint, take uh, V, dot it with F, and we see that we get QV, dot everything else. Um, and let's just uh, push that dot product through. So clearly Q being a uh, scalar, it won't matter, just push it out the way. Uh, we have a couple negatives that we could get rid of, so we just take the negatives from the gradient V, and time derivative of a, and then put a negative on the v cross the curl of a. So here we see that pushing the dot product in, we get v dot uh, gradient plus v dot time derivative minus the v dot a triple product. Okay, and here's where the cleverness comes in because we know that if we have curl of a, that gives us another vector. Then if we take that vector and uh, have the cross product with v, we get a, another vector or a pseudo vector that is orthogonal to v. That is one of the definitions of uh, the cross product. And so if that's the case, taking a dot product of an orthogonal vector will give us a zero. Since uh, the dot product of a cross, since we are taking a dot and a cross product of v, that is a great geometric argument and way to simplify this down very, very quickly. That being said, if we substitute the purple in, we see that we get some very similar terms here. One's a plus, one's a minus, so we 
can cancel the V dot gradient on or V dot gradient uh, scalar potential and they cancel in both terms and then we see we can factor that Q out put the minus sign back into the negative uh, V dot partial A over DT and then we're left with uh, partial V over DT and so with that we can factor out that D by DT put the Q in, uh, inside the brackets with some uh, parentheses and rearrange to get the minus sign out the way and we are left exactly with what we wanted, d by dt of q times v minus v dot a. How cool is that? All from a geometric argument of the dot products. That is wonderful. I love using those cool quirky tricks.